Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Mutual Friend. I'm DeAndre. And I'm Matt. I'm Gabe. I mean, I'm Gabby. Oh, and I hit my microphone. Could you hear that? <laughs> this is nuts. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. And today... No, I'm doing it. What are you talking about? Okay. It's her turn. Why are you tra- it's, my it's my turn. turn. <laughs> <laughs> guys, you guys can't make me laugh. Can I gotta be serious. Okay, we're not running it back. No, we got a good cut. Um, That's a good cut. Today, we have a very special guest. Very near and dear to all of our hearts. <laughs> One of the funniest people mm. that we know. Yo, that's crazy. Top five, top five. You know, True very, story. very top talented, five. very gifted. Top five is crazy. Very, what am I saying? A very gifted uh, musician and uh, worship leader and just, just a great, great person. Wow. Faithful Everybody, servant leader. Faith, mm. Faithful servant leader. Let's not forget prolific speaker. Oh, True. this is crazy. I though. haven't been switching it this whole time. That's fine. What was it on? Me. Oh, that's fine. Only you. Wait, the whole, like, as we all went through? No, but this all this, like. No, that's okay. fine. That's fine. Go ahead. Everyone. Wait, what? Do, how do you do this? Go ahead. Wait, how do you say, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you pass it off? Please like, welcome. Yeah. Oh, okay. Please welcome. The one, <laughs> the only, Gray Schrader. Yes. Wow, thank you. What's, what's the button? Yay. Sure. Yeah. Do you get it? I've pressed everything and nothing. <laughs> is, is the sound up? Nothing's that? working. No, it's amateur. Oh, there it is. Oh, you got it. Wait. Nope. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the one. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I did it. Good job. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Love that. <laughs> um, so we're here with the gang. We're talking about um, a topic that is, I don't know how to say, very emotional. Touchy. It's very touchy. It's very um, controversial. Uh, today, we are talking about church hurt. Oof. Church hurt. And um, just for context... So you guys know our biases. All of us currently attend, are involved in, and serve in church. Amen. But not all of us have always done that. And not all of us have grown up in church in the same way. Mm -hmm. So we all have different perspectives, but you just must know that our current bias is that we all are currently involved in church. So... I thought it's important to get that out of the way. So, church hurt. Um, first, let's define church hurt. Now, of course, I got good old Google. Nice. Google says this. Church hurt occurs when pain, physical or emotional, results from the actions or decisions associated with someone <coughs> in a church. Church hurt is aggravated when forgiveness is needed but not extended and when grievances are spoken, but church leaders and offending parties do not hear. Hmm. That's what it says. Dang. Uh, any objections or affirmations of that definition? No. I think that was pretty much covered it. I once heard a message from a pastor, and it was just a bunch of teenagers in the crowd. And he said, raise your hand if you've ever been hurt in church and just about everybody raised their hand mm-hmm. and said well you've experienced church hurt so yeah i think i think that pretty much covers just about all of it mm. i don't think it's a difficult thing to experience either like i feel like it's relatively easy just because people are kind of in an emotionally sensitive state when they go to church mm. especially if it's like a church you're like new at like, True. if you don't really have a bunch of relationship equity with the folks there, like, I feel like it's easy for something to happen that just might set you off mm-hmm. or just leave a lasting impression on you. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I have more to say, but I'm going to save it as we go on. Um, as When it comes to, like, personal experience with church hurt, I have experienced church hurt. Okay. Just like I've experienced work hurt, gym hurt, literally, friendship hurt, school hurt, 
anywhere that I spend my time, I've gotten hurt. Mm. And I've hurt other people mm. in all those places. Say that. I think it's uh, questionable why we emphasize church hurt as if you're not supposed to get hurt in this specific place for some reason. Because hmm. I feel like anywhere you go, because you're dealing with people, yeah, there will be problems. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I've experienced, you know, church hurt for sure. But just like with anybody else, any person, I will either forgive or I'll forget it or both. And, you know, there's been times when I'd have disagreements or things that made a rub, might have rubbed me the wrong way. Mm. But uh, that's one person out of a whole body of Christ. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'll say this, too. I've been hurt by people in church that are very close to me, mm, yeah. that I love dearly, and I know love me. And it hurt in the moment, but then we've made up, moved on, and our relationship is stronger. Mm. In many cases, many different people. So, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. You others? Thoughts? I personally don't feel like I've experienced church hurt just because of the way that I process pain or the way that I view relationships. I never had the mentality to blame the establishment, you know? Like, I don't think I've ever I've ever experienced anything like that except for when my problem was directly with an establishment like how i've shared like about how i didn't like school is because i just Mm -hmm. didn't like school yeah but i never like had a dislike or felt a resentment or a pain from church itself Mm -hmm. because of something that happened in church Mm -hmm. because church as an idea hasn't done anything to me Mm -hmm. so yeah so i understand why other people associate painful maybe even traumatic experiences with the place that it happened in, but, like, I personally never did that. Mm. Why do you think people do that? Oh, as a defense mechanism, like, kind of trying to protect yourself. It's like, all right, I felt this way in this situation. What were all of the elements involved in this situation, Mm -hmm. including the location, the people, the event? Like, they break down everything. And then, like, whatever is going to give them the most favorable possibility of not experiencing it again, they kind of take that route. So, like, people, people like, view us as, like, church people. Mm. So it's, like, to avoid the church people, I'm just going to avoid the church, and mm-hmm. then I won't get the hurt again. Mm-hmm. Even though church people are just people. Yeah. So, right. so it's, not, it's not a foolproof tactic but i understand the thinking behind it to a degree and like i kind of alluded to before you can avoid church people to try to avoid church hurt but you will get hurt somewhere else yeah right and it's like at what point can you just stop dealing with all people everywhere i mean it's kind of a dangerous slippery slope grace any experience with church hurt um i would say (laughs) It's hard because, like, like you said, like, I I know people that have experienced like some major hurt from the church, and by the church I mean, like, who's the church? We are, right? Mm-hmm. You know, people put a attach it to a building, but we are the church according to scripture. We're the body of Christ, and so I know people that have been really hurt by those who are the church, who represent the church. Um, I myself haven't experienced anything nearly in depth to what like so many people like close to me have experienced. Um, and so all I can say to my own hurt is just unrealistic expectation on, um, Mm. those in leadership, you know, um, pastoral leadership. Um, 
Oh, you know, because they are the shepherd to the flock, right? And they do have a key responsibility within the church. Um, and it's my responsibility to be able to shepherd what I am in control of, which is my own walk with Christ. And so if I idolize that person, place them on a platform in my own, you know, mindset, then I'm going to lead myself astray. You know, I'm going to experience hurt because they're not going to be able to meet my every expectation because they're not God, right? Only mm. he is able to ex- do exceedingly and abundantly. Come on. Right? So. But, you know, so I think, I think like you were saying, it, people associate church hurt with like a particular organization, but it's people. You mm. know, people hurt people. We're, none of us are perfect. And so I think it's just up to us, like what of what we can control. I can control the way I view things and my perspective, mm. but what am I doing to foster that? Like, am I like, um, I don't know, am I helping myself in processing my hurt or am I staying hurt? Mm-hmm. Like, what am I doing with that hurt? You know, what's the next? Many people just stay there and that's why they Ooh, just, yeah, true. they stay there and it becomes church hurt. They like before when, you know, like when you're telling a story for the first time to somebody that some, something happened to you and you're like saying that story and you like give detail after detail. But later on in life, as time goes on, there's less details that you start to give. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like as time goes on, that story just becomes I was really hurt in church. Yeah. As opposed to, well, this person said this to me and I took it this way. Instead, it just turns into I was hurt at church. And now that's. And so when somebody else hears that, they go, ooh, that's yeah. scary. I don't want to do that. They they yeah. kind of become an evangelist against church. Right, ooh. And it's, right. Like, it's like, like you said, like even their experience as they remember it becomes watered down. Right. Because they're kind of just wovening this concept into their identity mm-hmm. of I'm not a person that goes to church because church is this. Mm-hmm. And like they lose sight of what actually happened. Right. Yeah. It's all about the story you tell yourself. Mm-hmm. So you say one of the leading factors when you put people on a pedestal, mm. right? Yeah. Have you done that? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Care to share? Sure. Um, I mean, I grew up in a home with pastors as parents. Mm-hmm. So, um, and my dad, my dad is... as we, My siblings and I joke around that we he's as close to Jesus as you could get. <laughs> Like he is That's just, a great compliment. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> He's like the most humble guy that you will meet. He is so kind. He's has such a mercy gift. Like, and we just are like, how do you, how do you do that? Like, I don't get it. So for me growing up, seeing that example as a father and as a pastor as well, um, I tend to put him on a pedestal, mm. um, and what things are supposed to look like. Mm. Um, and so when, you know, people fail, I would associate, like, for instance, when my dad would do something that hurt me, it would become, like, God hurt me. Mm. Oh, shoot. Yeah, which, mm. um, I, obviously, looking back, it's like, that's not true. But, yeah. you know, at the time, you're a kid, you know, things are much more, you know, bigger when you're, ch- when you're a child, and, mm. like, your everything kind of hits a little bit harder. And so, as a as a kid, when some my dad would do something that would hurt me, it would it would hurt ten times deeper than anything else would. And so, like when my dad would raise his voice at me, oh my gosh, oh, I literally shoot. like he didn't do do he doesn't do it often like mm. ever. But when he did, it was like, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> God himself. Going to hell. It's <laughs> like, crazy. Hell. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> and so. Uh, there's been that example and then as I've got uh, become an adult uh, a young adult I um, I have a pastor that I would say now like I used to at, at the time when he was my youth pastor I would say that I would put on like unrealistic expectations on him mm. um, even sometimes I find myself doing it now mm. um, because I think well he's you know my pastor so he's supposed to do this you know, but at the same time, it's just when you put unrealistic expectations on people, you're only hurting yourself. You're not doing anything but hurting yourself because 
we fail. Like, (laughs) like I could, and like, I've had to like teach myself, like people have probably put expectations on me that I have not met and I've hurt them. You know what I'm saying? True. So like, what do I do with that? Like, oh my gosh. Like, then I feel awful. (laughs) I'm like, I need to just get over this. Like, but you know, I ended up really just hurting myself, um, in the process. And so that was what I would say for my personal experience of, when I have been hurt in the church, I guess. It's just really my own doing, to be honest. See, this is why in ministry, me personally, I try to set the bar so low. <laughs> but hear me out, hear me out, though. Hear me out. No, hear me out. It's crazy. Now, Red Seven. Listen, <laughs> I want to be like Jesus. That's right. right? He, Don't you guys? He was, yeah, yeah. he yeah. was lowly. Yeah. That's not where I was going. <laughs> but, know, but, know. <laughs> you know, I will say to our people, hey, I deal with this. Mm. I struggle with this. Mm-hmm. I'm going through this and I don't know how it's about to work out. And they're like, dang, like, like, for example, recently we did a relationship series in youth group. And uh, my first message, the first half of it, I was basically talking about how I was a loser mm. for a long time. I showed a very embarrassing picture of me on the screen from all of them just to show them that just like them, I was stupid for a long time and still do some things that are stupid. Sure, sure. But I think sometimes you got to show them your humanity so that they that way they don't put you on this pedestal sure. of being this perfect person who's always had it together all the time. Like, no, I got to show them the real, you know, real yeah. me. So, yeah, that's a good take. Yeah. yeah. My favorite story of the Bible is David. Mm. Because if you think about David and his upbringing, he was under the leadership of Saul. And talk about a toxic mm. church environment. Mm. You know what I mean? Like he's the he had he tried to get him killed. Yeah. <laughs> like a multiple few times. times. Yeah. Quite a few times. <laughs> He was, um, and like, honestly, I'm surprised how that David didn't have a problem with like self worth because when Saul would call him up, it would just be so that he could play an instrument for him so that all of his Mm -hmm. spiritual attacks would go away, Mm. you know? So, like, even that, like, experiencing like church hurt from that, like, I can't imagine what that must have been like for him, like, being a, um, a steward for his kingdom and he was like manipulated in the way that he was manipulated yeah just being used and stuff yeah hey, you know and i'll say this too i think there are ways like i, I feel about like my opening statement was kind of like in defense of the church but also there are some things that i know can result in church hurt that we should avoid one of them being using folks Mm. I feel like we're so quick to like try to give people roles and like yeah make them do stuff, but it's like hold up, gotta be might want to might want to chill out and giving people roles because you don't want them to feel like they're being used, right. you know? Like oh, just come so that way you can uh, play for me, boy. You know, mm. like we don't we don't want that. <laughs> no, that's that's what be so happening though. I get you. Folks I be get trying you. to get people to come to the church just so they can do stuff for the church instead of just like. Just serving the Why Lord. don't you just come and be a part of the community? And then if you find there's a way that you want to serve, then great. But like trying to take folks just for their use, I feel like can be dangerous. Yeah, for sure. So sure. I agree. Because then people might find their value in what they can do only and not who they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would say personally that I've struggled with that. Like I've only felt like I was of value to the kingdom when I was doing something mm-hmm. in the church. Mm-hmm. Like, I grew up in church, and so, like, I was, like, helped in kids' ministry when I was 10. Mm. Like, and that was what, like, and then I would get appreciation and thanks from people, and Mm. I was like, yeah. So then on to the next, I taught myself how to play the bass guitar so Mm. I could play in the worship team. Yeah. And then I got thanks and appreciation for that. And then I taught myself how to play guitar so I could do that. You know, like, for a while, I just did it for others i didn't do it for the lord Mm. 
and that was see that's uh, self inflicting hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like yeah. hurting myself, but I didn't really realize how much like I was doing it for the. I was doing it for man. I wasn't doing it for the Lord. Mm. And so it's just such a tricky walk of like making sure as like leadership, like I know like myself being in the position that I am at my church, like I never want to like, like you said, like force people. I never want to, um, you know, make them feel like their only worth is if they're serving on our welcome team. Like, yeah, like you can do that. That would be awesome. But mm. like do that because you feel like the Lord is calling you to do something to like continue to grow his kingdom, you know? But yeah. I want to speak on two things. Uh, that could be the result of like people having church hurt. You mentioned expectation, like placed on people, mm -hmm. but I want to just highlight the concept of expectation period. Mm -hmm. Like, what your idea in your mind is of what church is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you get something different or sometimes you get convicted about something and mm. like just the lack of comfort in that scenario can like just disturb you to the point where you're like, this isn't what it's supposed to be just because of what you think it's supposed to be. Yeah. And you haven't really had that experience of what church is really meant to be as the scripture describes it. But uh, also, aside from expectations, just the experience alone with church. For one example, sometimes people who are really hands-on in the church, like kind of like how we like actually like do stuff within the church itself, sometimes you can develop a relationship with the church where it feels like work or it feels like a business, mm. Mm. and it's like, the sole mission is we got to get the job done. We got to do this. We got to hit these points. This has to happen. And, like, you sort of lose sight of keeping God at the, the head That's of the church. That's and it's, wow. it's more like an organization. So mm -hmm. it's like you're not going to get out of it what you're supposed to get out of it because the main purpose of it has been lost because it's more like a business at that point. And also on the flip side, sometimes within ourselves, if God is not the main focus, then we kind of lose sight of what's happening. And I'll, I'll give a personal example where one time, shout out to Calvary because <laughs> <laughs> I love Calvary. And we're always talking about how Pentecostal it is here, right? <laughs> <laughs> one time, before I was used to all, all that <laughs> stuff happening all the time, I remember one time I came in, and I was not ready for this at all. And it was just, folks was going crazy. Folks were speaking in tongues and stuff. And, like, they was getting the oil to, like, anoint folks' heads. Mm -hmm. And, like, this lady, like, got healed. And, like, just in myself, I started, like, questioning, like, like, what, like am I, am I, in the process of somebody trying to like fool me right now like i was like i was like i was like all right what is what is this bro cuz look wait, 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 what kind of what more detail someone was in the process of getting healed how do you know like what kind of healing are we talking about like she was like she had like a medical issue mm. and like came forward oh, wow. and everyone put their hands on her and was praying for her and they put the oil on her forehead and like she said like like she couldn't move like a limb or something but mm. then like it started to move and I was like, all right, y'all folks is putting on a show for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but that was like within myself, though. That mm. wasn't anything that the church did. That yeah. was mm. like my doubting spirit. Yeah. Because True. where I sit, like towards the edge, mm. is right where they be getting the oil from. Mm. But before that day, I never saw it right there. So I was like, bro, did they plant that right there, <laughs> right before the service? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was simulation. like, I was like, was this plant? <laughs> so like. It's so, like, I found myself just, like, doubting mm. and, like, being, like, are folks putting on a show for me right now? Mm. And, like, other people, and I've heard stories of people, like, where they experience something like that and just get on the defensive of, like, this can't be real. Folks are being deceitful to me right now. I can't trust anybody in here. And it's, like, they didn't do anything to you for you to have that experience. Mm. It's just, like your flesh wanting to resist the the reality or the possibilities of what God can do. Mm. Well, 
and I think a lot of that comes from just like what you be hearing, like from other people. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like if you never heard on some YouTube video or something about how churches be doing this, that, whatever, and they be faking, and they like you probably wouldn't even think about it. We ever. gonna pass that collection plate <laughs> around one more like, time. <laughs> like if you really think about it. All that people are getting worked up about are like triggers, mm. you know, like that they hear happen. So as soon as they hear giving, they're like, "Oh, see, yep, them, they are trying." Them right. folks yeah, trying they to always try. To, like yeah. when it might not be that, right? You know, or like you said with the healing, you know, it's like okay, let's everybody let's come forward and pray. Pr- come forward and pray. See, they're trying. To, yeah, and you always like assume the worst. Yeah, I think. There's always a healthy level of like skepticism in anything, but when you're just so skeptical to where you can't even be open to anything, that's that's you're in dangerous territory. Yeah, and it speaks to your faith. Like, if you're if you're literally resisting the possibility of believing in anything, mm-hmm. then you're in a dangerous place. Because like, mm-hmm. what do you believe in mm-hmm. at that point? Right. Just yourself? Yeah. Good, well, that's, good luck. that's the point because people sometimes see the worst, like assume the worst in everybody. Like anytime they see anyone on a platform or something, they're like, oh, see, they're probably doing this, that, whatever. They're not really this. But like really what that's saying is that you've got it all together and you know it all and mm-hmm. all that. When that's not, like that's not humble at all. No, I I just forgot to switch it uh, when you started talking, but I got it by the end. It was just on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sorry. okay. I thought you had a banger point. I wasn't locked in. Oh. It's okay. I was going to talk about, too, kind of like what you said, like the comfortability and like the uncomfortability that happens sometimes that people like then all of a sudden like a switch goes on and they're like, oh, I can't be here. Mm-hmm. But like that's like a lot of people like I say a lot of people, some people that I know. They have experienced hurt just solely based on the fact that something in scripture doesn't contradicts what they believe based on the culture that is being set. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I need an example. So for instance, somebody who identifies as a certain sexuality. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry. I'm just gonna say it. Go ahead. I'm gonna go for it. Grace is saying it. I'm gonna say it's it. Grace. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's not me. It's not me. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm just, okay. Right All right. Oh, okay. Last name is crazy. Government name. Um, don't say that again. Um, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm playing. I'm playing. I felt scared. No. <laughs> right. No, but for real, like somebody that like has uh, struggles with their sexual identity, and they come into the church and they hear a message that's specifically talking about sexual identity and what the Bible says about that they're automatically going to be hurt Mm -hmm. unless they're open to hear what the word of God says. So church is countercultural. Indeed. And so those that want to like take up what are susceptible to our culture, they're going to be hurt. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like you're going to be hurt because church is Mm countercultural. It goes against the grain of what this world is, right? Because our world is sinful in nature. And so when people come in saying, well, you know, I'm going to try it. And then they hear that. It's up to them of whether or not they want to say like, okay, like I'll hear you out or that's crazy. You're canceled. Mm -hmm. You're done. And then who am I surrounding myself with when I'm hurt? Like I was going to talk about that too. Like who we surround ourselves with when we are hurt, whether that's church hurt or any kind of hurt is really going to decide where you go next. Like, are you going to stay there or you, and or and be surrounded by people that are going to be like, yeah, I can't believe they did that. That's mm. awful. Or are you going to surround yourself with people that are going to actually help you and process and like say, OK, but what's next? Like, mm. we can't stay here. You know, like you can't stay in the hurt. And so so many people stay in church hurt. They don't go to the next, which is healing. Like mm. healing is a process. It's not something that happens just overnight. You can't just forgive and forget automatically. Like, it's a process that you have to ask the Lord to help you with because he is the healer. Amen. And so, amen. And so, I mean, so many people just want to say that I was hurt and then just want immediate justification. Mm-hmm. And that's just not realistic. It's just not. Like, people aren't going to get that. 
closure that they want in an instant. And that's when so many people find themselves constantly perpetuating that they were hurt by church and they want to tell everyone around them that they were hurt by church. And now I'm trying to tell you, like you said, like it's almost like an evangelism where they're like, I was hurt by church. You shouldn't go either, <laughs> like, mm. which is crazy. You know, misery loves company. That's right. That's what I'm saying. So it's just like, why, like, how are we as the church like helping those that are that are going through hurts like are we teaching that what that process looks like you know are we pointing them to the scripture you know as people that have experienced hurt just in general like you were saying like what are we doing to like help those that have been hurt in the church to move on to the next like why are we staying there you know like there's a there's a there's a time for lament there's a time for mourning. There's a time for like saying that really sucked. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that happened to me. And Lord, I need your help because I'm so hurt. Like brokenness is real, but he's near to the brokenhearted. Hey. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so like, but. <laughs> I don't know which one does it. <laughs> Let me just start. No, first it's, okay. Okay. it's okay. But um, yeah, I don't really know what I was saying after that. He's okay. going this time. You got it? It's that one's page. I can't hear it. Next page. It? Yeah, there's page. Those two pages. Oh, yeah, the like... little switches. Look at the bottom. Oh, oh my gosh. What's that do? Hey. Oh, wait. You made those horses deep. And this one. You made them high. Oh, wait, go back to that one. This one? Pull the. Oh, what about mine? Pull the lever. Check, check. Here we go. <laughs> it's only mine. Oh. <laughs> you just say pull the lever, Crunk. Crunk, pull the lever. It's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I can't hear it. I don't know. What's That's happening. so funny, bro. <laughs> oh man, I'm missing out. I I I need to lock in. No, All there's right. there there's it's like a no no. I had points. Um. Oh okay. Oh for what you just said. Yeah. Dang it, it's gone. No, you oh. got it. You got oh, no. it, bro. Okay. About people who are around you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hate this guy. What? I just looked at you. What's the problem? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but about the people like that are around you. Let's start like in that church hurt moment, right? Mm -hmm. So, pastor says something. In your example, it conflicts with what you identify yourself as. Mm -hmm. Everyone else, a part of the regular congregation, they're like, yeah, like not in their head, they agree with it. Right. So immediately you go into fight or flight. Okay. So what I heard offended me, made me feel uncomfortable. And now I'm looking around and it looks like everyone around me is on that page. Right. So they must hate me mm. is what that yeah. individual is probably thinking at this point. Right. So to get out of that situation of being uncomfortable or feeling like you're not loved and accepted where you are, you go to the people who you know mm. are already down with that mentality that you're in right. for the reaffirmation mm -hmm. this is where as the church we need to step up this is why when new people come in or even people that you see at church all the time this is why we have to connect with one another yeah and just treat each other well with no agenda with nothing to like get out of one another because imagine if somebody like imagine if the person that invited them to church is the one that can have that conversation with them like right. well how did it make you feel why let's walk through this but more than likely they're just gonna tell that that friend like i wouldn't like to really come back or like if they try to invite them again they're gonna be like i'm busy that day blah 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 and they're gonna have those conversations with people that align with their lifestyle right if we put ourselves in position to just be kind to people and like genuinely ask mm -hmm. like well how was your experience well like like tell me about it like oh, this hurts you? Like, let yeah. me hear about that in further detail. If we're just available for people like that, then we can actually have constructive conversations with them mm -hmm. and kind of mend the hurt before it grows like we were talking about. Right. Yeah, that's so true. See, here's the tricky part. Because some people, they get hurt because somebody genuinely did something that was that was wrong. True. Yeah. But a lot of times, people get hurt just because they get convicted. Yeah, That's really what it is. 
just like your example, maybe it's an identity thing, maybe it's a unforgiveness thing for them, maybe it's a some some any type of sin or grievances, and somebody spoke to it basically, and now they're like, oh, they're so offensive over there, they're so this is why I don't go to church because, but dog, that's your fault. Yeah, and sometimes that's the hard conversation to have because I can imagine. In this scenario, right, you invite someone to church and they're like, yeah, you know, this really hurt me. And they explain it. And you're probably looking at them like, bro, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, folks be playing the victim when Oof. there is nothing to be a victim about. You're just convicted. Right. That's supposed to happen. So. But it's uncomfortable. Uh, it is uncomfortable. And people don't like that. That's true. But that's where... That's where the tricky part comes in. Of course, there are times where, yes, like someone did something wrong to you, of course. Yeah. But uh, sometimes it's it's literally just you were just wrong. I remember I saw this on Instagram one time where this person was claiming church hurt and all the comments. It was like thousands of comments. They were all like, oh, yeah, girl, they did you so wrong. And basically, uh, the church kicked her out because she was sleeping around with people. And they like found out and they tried to like talk to her about it. Like, hey, like. Let's talk this through. Like, And then she, like, wouldn't. So she, like, was unrepentant. So they kicked her out. They said, hey, you can't be you can't be a part of the body if you're, like, openly doing this. They gave her her tithe money back oh, and everything. Yeah. They, were, they were like, hey, like. Here's that return on the investment. No <laughs> they were like, hey, here you go. Like, Yo, uh, hope wild. go. Basically, like, yeah, you can't be out here serving like that if you're, like, an unrepentant sin. And all the comments were like, oh, that's, like, none of their business Stop. to do that. Like, that's, that's, like, so wrong of them. But, like, now I'm thinking, now, would I send a whole letter of, like, you're kicked out? No. Absolutely not. But that is their prerogative as a religious institution. If you are not abiding by the religious, the, by the rules, and this unrepentantly too, the Bible literally says, have no dealings with them anymore. Just like, you know, in our ministry, right, with youth group and young adults, if down the line we had a leader who we found out, like, was doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, hey, guess what? We're gonna have a conversation privately. But if they're like, you know what? Really, I don't see a problem with me doing X, Y, Z. We'll have to be like, hey, buddy, <laughs> you can't be a leader anymore. Hey, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, because that's just wrong. Like, right. you know, what I'm saying. Yeah. So there's always a difference between like, you know, someone, someone like, is doing something. That they actually feel they actually like are victimized by versus they're just unrepentant. Yeah. So Yeah. And I think that process of like the healing process, it needs to start with, well, what what was said? Was that intended to hurt me? Mm. Like, was that really was the intent behind what that person did truly to offend me? Was it truly to harm me and cause me to be broken? Hopefully the answer is no. <laughs> mm. Now, if the answer is yes, then I'm so sorry. But if the answer is no, then okay, then then that's when you need to release it to the Lord, cast your burdens. Like mm-hmm. you need to give it to God because he's the only one that can truly heal your brokenness. And so, yeah, I just think that a lot of times like we just people just stay in that hurt place and don't go anywhere else. They just stay stuck. And then it it just causes that hurt to like if you're hurt, like you're gonna start hurting other people. True. You know, like when you're broken, you cause other people like you you wanna you wanna hurt other people when you're hurt. And so not maybe not intentionally, but that's what happens when yeah. you're hurt. I mean sometimes it's like you're projecting hurt on right. others. Like you guys were saying, when you got the church hurt evangelists, like they want you to find something to like be heard about yeah so then you'd be like you know what yeah they are wrong and then misery loves company like i said before Mm -hmm. so that's really wait that's really what it is Mm -hmm. so yeah gabe (laughs) gabe have you ever experienced any type of church hurt or seen it with anybody you know (laughs) with all your years in those who have an ear let them hear I was waiting for Gabe to answer. 
Gabe? It's your time. Where's Gabe? Uh, shout out to Gabe. Shout yeah, out to shout Gabe. Out Gabe. For real. Yeah, holding it down. We love you, boy. Love that yeah. guy. I've I've like heard people who have experienced church hurt, and like I don't know. I I I, I find it so hard to understand how like you can just like you know take that experience or like you know you were hurt whether it's like you brought it upon yourself or like it was actually like someone actually hurt you like I don't understand how you can just like cut off like a whole community Mm. of people who like potentially like love and like care about you and like can be there for you like because I know in like my experience with church like the people that I go to church with like they're my family like they really care and like they have been there for me and my family like in like our lowest moments and like when we needed the most so I find it like kind of hard to comprehend when you can just like cut that off because like you know like we're here to like bear each other's burdens and like walk through life together but then you're just like "Mm." no Mm -hmm. and you kind of just like cut that out like I don't that's so sad to me Mm -hmm. it is sad double hurt I would say it's easier for most people for two reasons. One, they haven't had an experience like that in what they believe to be church. So it's like they don't think that that's what they're doing. Even though there is the potential for them to have that, they don't see that. So it's like they're like it's whatever. But two, I think a lot of people don't know what love is and like haven't really experienced a community that loves and cares for them. Mm-hmm. Like we were talking about in your example, if there's a community who affirms my beliefs and like my identity and I already have that separately, I'd rather just fall back on them whenever I feel any discomfort or hurt or et cetera, et cetera. So like they're like, why try to become a part of this new community when I already feel like I have one Mm. and they give me what I deem to be love? Even though that's not really love, if yeah. you're just like affirming someone's yeah. false outlook, if I'm just gonna call a spade a spade, right? Mm. And and they could have people that actually really genuinely love them and care for them. So once again, it's on us as a church to really exemplify what true love means with one another. Because like, if they have people that actually love them. And then, like, we treat people like newcomers to our church. We just treat them like it's whatever. And that's on us for not properly acting as a church as we are called to be. Indeed. Yeah. I think it's easier for me to say that it's easier to heal from being hurt in church because of my history in church and understanding the Word of God as opposed to somebody who doesn't know Mm -hmm. what the Word of God really says comes into church and hears something countercultural and gets mad is like they hurt me I gotta go because I would say for me personally I've experienced a hurt that wasn't didn't happen in church but it happened by somebody who was a believer in Christ Mm -hmm. and who I associated as somebody who loved the Lord Mm -hmm. and they hurt me really bad and um I had to understand though that like I said earlier that it was not their intention to hurt me. And the Lord really had to walk me through the process of that person. They, they are God literally told me like, I'm sitting there in my room. I'm like crying my eyes out. And the Lord had to tell me, yeah, I know it's so sad. The Lord told me, Oh, that's my daughter too. Dang. Yep. <sighs> yeah. Mm. that hit. And I literally stopped crying. Mm. And I was like, Whoa, like that's, like that's like the person that I've been like saying all these harsh things about because of they hurt me. Like, what is the first thing that we do when somebody hurts you? Our sinful nature. We're like, that, let mm-hmm. me tell you <laughs> about this person, you know. And so that was my, you know, my first instinct was to surround myself with people that I knew would be like, yeah, like mm-hmm. screw them, <laughs> like, you know. Um, and so when the Lord told me that. I was immediately convicted. Yeah. I was like, oh my, I repented. I was like, Lord, I'm so sorry. Like, please forgive me. Like, thank you for giving me this new perspective. Like, this is exactly what I need in order to go to the next, Mm -hmm. in order to heal. 
and now to be able to process this hurt that I've experienced. Um, and he allowed me to not stay there. You know, he, he stayed there with me when it was fresh, when it was a, you know, a wound that was just cut. And now I have to, you know, ban he bandaged the wound for me and he, you know, cared for it. But then it was time to like on to the next stage of the healing. And Lord was like, dude, like that's my daughter too. Mm -hmm. Like you're my daughter, but that's my daughter too. And what happened hurts, but you can't stay there. You got to You got to move on. I think it's especially important when you understand that it's unintentional. Yeah. Right. Right. And that people are trying to honor God in the way that they know as well. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to assume that everybody is out to get you, take some humility and realize they probably don't care that much. Like they're not trying so hard to like, oh yeah, let me, I'm out to get grace. It's like, not that personal. Like it's not right, a person. Exactly. These people it's are most likely mm -hmm. trying to honor God the best way that they know how. Mm -hmm. And that's that. Yeah. You know, if someone is really going out of their way to specifically hurt you, man, that sucks more for them right. than you, that they're even wasting their time <laughs> doing True. that. And, you know, I still find it crazy that these, you know, church hurt evangelists, you know, will take so much time talking about something that they're so called done with. Yeah. It's like talking about your ex over and over Oof. and over again. Hmm? Like, I thought you were done. Right. Right? So that's kind of what I think. Yeah. It's like, and you know, this sticks with me. This quote really applies to so many areas of my life, and I say it all the time. Uh, shout out my boy Derek Nichols. Derek Nichols, uh, a coworker of mine. Oh, nice. nice. And uh, he said this one time because we were at work and some things were not ideal. And I found myself venting about it. And he mm. said, you know what? I agree. But here's the thing. If you don't have any solution to the problem, don't complain about it. Mm. I was like, you're right. You're so right. And then guess what I did? I started, I stopped. And I started thinking, okay, how can we make this better? And I think we should have that approach when it comes to church because church is a collection of people. It's mm -hmm. a body. It's an assembly. Um, so if you have a problem, why don't you, instead of like bashing it all the time, why don't you try to do what you can, do your part to make it better? Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. For a lighthearted example, here at Calvary, mm. years ago, we didn't have no young adults. Mm. So guess what we did? We made young adults happen. And boom, now because of that, we got young adults. You could probably complain, man, you know, our worship team sucks. But guess what? You can join the worship team. If you think that, man. <laughs> <laughs> the carpet in here, the pews are so ugly. Write the check. Right Why don't right you check. write the check? Hey, right. shout out whoever did this. I don't even know. We had an atrocious sound system issue. <laughs> Somebody wrote a check for thousands of dollars Praise to replace God. it. <laughs> they said, you know what? Instead of me complaining about it every week, I'm going to actually write a check and Let's help go. this out. And that <laughs> that is how it's done. <laughs> Instead of complaining about, oh, this sucks. and that. There's, honestly, there's two solutions. You can either yourself go and try to help the problem. Not just go and complain about it, but go and actually help yourself. Or find somewhere else. Mm -hmm. mm. There's so many yeah. places you can go. Not all of them <clears throat> suck. Not right. all of them, you know, are, are a certain way. You can go find somewhere else that you like better. True. Yeah. That's different. all I got to say. Yeah, it's good. I just wanted to say, kind of in line with the last thing both of you guys just said about, like, addressing the problem. Like, in that situation where you were talking about somebody hurts you, but you get to that moment of awareness and accountability where, one, you can start, like, asking yourself, where do I go now? Right. But also, the Lord might equip you in that moment to go back to the person and, like, in a case where they were actually potentially wrong— be like, hey, 
can we talk about this? This is what happened from my experience moving forward. I think that it could be better if this, this, and this happened. And, like, they might find in themselves that they did make an error. Mm -hmm. And, like, they may be able to improve moving forward. So you might actually help yourself and that person. But you got to actually look for solutions, like you said. Do it, Yeah. I read a book after this happened to me. Yeah, I know. I read a book. Isn't that crazy? (laughs) Um, But it was about unforgiveness, uh, forgiving what you can't forget by Lisa Turkers. Read it. Um, And when I was in this place of, like, I can't forgive this person, they hurt me too bad. Um, I was, well, I remembered, number one, what um, the word of God says to bless your enemies. And I just began to start praying. Lord, I pray that you would bless this person today. Wow. Whatever they're doing, wherever they're at, I'm not going to ask questions of where they are. I'm not going to pray anything specific other than, Lord, you know where they are. You know their needs. I pray that you would bless them. Mm. Wow. And that was it. And from that, I was able to become a little bit more descriptive in my prayer for her. Mm. And the Lord really graced me through that process of being able to pray for her because there was a point when it just happened where I was like... I'm praying for her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they that person like did me dirty. Like I don't know to them anything. I tried I said my peace. I was I tried to be a peacemaker and I tried to voice like kind of like what you're saying like what they did and how it affected mm-hmm. me and it got me nowhere and I'm like so I did everything I'm supposed to do Lord so I'm all done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the Lord that's when he was like dude that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> like you can bless her and you can pray for her. Um, and ask the ask not just because they hurt me and they need to fix themselves, mm-hmm. but just pray blessing. That's the best thing that you could do for anybody. But in the book, it talked about how the blood of Jesus covers a multitude, right? And it covers it covers the wounds. Um, and so, just keep pleading the blood is all that you can do when you are hurt, when you have feel you have unforgiveness in your heart, that you just need to keep pleading the blood of Jesus because it covers just about everything and that's all that you can do as a as a believer if you've been hurt now for those that don't believe i encourage you to believe but Amen. <laughs> because you should try it you should try it it's good um because if you believe in in god and in jesus christ and who he is and who he came to be not in man not in um what they say uh but in who god is and who god says he is um, that's when you're going to find freedom, not when you place your trust in in mankind. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. I wanted to read a psalm, a psalm really quick, too. Some scripture. Some scripture. Some scripture For, scriptural reference. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Are you getting church right now because I made fun of you? No, nah, I'll that? be okay. Okay. I'll pray about it. Um, <laughs> psalm 118, verse 5. Says, I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire to those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Amen. Story. Better to trust the Lord than to trust man. Put your confidence in him. And he'll help you. Man can't help you. Yeah, he'll help you. He'll heal you. That's all I got. Let's go. I got a scripture. Let's hear it. Right. Hebrews 10. Hebrews is a great book, by Hebrews the way. Hebrews 10 is you know. so good, dude. So Hebrews 10, um, it's talking about, you know, persevering in the faith. Mm. And uh, basically... Starting in verse 24, it says this. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Mm. First of all, that's powerful because that's what we're supposed to do as a church, right? We're supposed to encourage one another and inspire each other Mm. to keep doing good. Mm. And then it goes on to say, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Mm. So... I love the phrase, like, not giving up meeting together because it it implies that it can get hard and you might want to give up, but we're supposed to keep meeting together. That's, that's like, a command. 
scripture from the Lord. I mean, right? Um, and it even says like some people did give up, right? Some of the habit of doing, but you're supposed to keep encouraging as it keeps getting worse. Like the days will get more evil, and the Lord is still going to be approaching. And with that in mind, that's why we should be meeting together still. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's good. It's a good one. Yeah, real. Do you have any practical applications? This has been no, whoa, whoa, whoa. the mutual friend. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm gay. <laughs> Do you have any I'm practical gay. application? <laughs> and I'm gay. <laughs> um, <laughs> not really. Like, what I was going to say, you kind of said how, like, you can find another church. Because, like, I'm sure there are churches that are whack. And there are probably people who really did hurt you. Mm. And, like, maybe they intended to. And, like, the failure of people does not, like, equate with, like, like, God didn't fail you. Like, it's mm. the people. So, like, you can always, you know, try another church. You don't like that one? Well, reflect. Why do you not like it? Mm. Mm. And, like, you can try other places. And I'm sure, like, <laughs> Calvary. Mm. You know. <laughs> can I 28870 <laughs> Chardon Road, Willoughby Hills, Ohio. Oh. You can, you can pull address. up. Oh, the address. Just, yeah. And also, let God work on your heart. Mm. Like, and be open to, I don't know, forgiveness. Like, he he forgave you. Mm. Mm, come, come on. on. We got to forgive other people. And it's not Christine. always easy, like I, you said before, Grace, but, like, it's important. And if we're going to freely accept the forgiveness of God, like, we got to give it out, too. Mm. Mm. That's what I got. That's so good. That's a banger point. That's so good. That's oh, a whole real. great. My other practical application is just like when it comes to hurt in general you got to realize you will get hurt anywhere i feel like i've said that many times but that's kind of my main thing and also realize you are not always the victim you probably hurt other people too mm. so just like you were saying you be, if you're going to be unforgiving like that you better hope that other people aren't unforgiving as well towards you Good one. What was your question again? About like judging others with like the, the same measure you used. Yes, mm -hmm. will be yeah. used to, to measure to judge. So just, yeah. you know, go for it. That's me. I switched on my phone. I was just going to say for anything you go into in life, check yourself at the door and. Understand that it's more fruitful to be open than it is to be expectant in most cases because we be having dumb expectations. Yeah. Just calling a spade a spade. Like, be open to what could be instead of being fixed on what you're expecting or would like to happen or the best scenario in your mind. Because often the best scenario in your mind has the potential to be surpassed by what God has for you, mm -hmm. but it's on the other side of friction Come on. and the lack of comfortability. Oh, yeah. So be, be open. He is. Yes, he is. That was good. That was good. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, so moral of the story is don't give up on Christ's bride because she's lit. She is lit. <laughs> she might have her shortcomings here and there. Wait, you didn't let me do my personal application. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy uh, oh it's my turn now i was just wasn't sure um i kind of already i guess i kind of did already say it i but I, that's why i had this book a tale three kings it's a great book um it's a study in brokenness um and it's a really good book you can borrow that actually no i'm matt's gonna borrow it first um but it's a really good book it uh, really helped me in a hard season of feeling broken. Um, and then also kind of going on what I said a lot about not staying in a place of hurt, but going ne going to the next, which is a place of healing um, and letting him heal you. Um, Psalm, Psalm 147.3 says he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Mm. And that's just a choice of whether or not you want to let him heal you. So... Uh, yeah, let him heal you. And uh, don't stay in the hurt. That was mine. Indeed. 
Thank you. Thank you. Well, guys, it's been a great conversation, an incredible conversation. Um, yeah. Is that game? It's game. It is. Well, guys, thank you for listening, tuning in, watching. If you appreciated this episode, why don't you like it? Share it. Subscribe. Mm. If you want to support the podcast, there's many ways you can find us. GoFundMe, Cash App, Patreon, even. Like so just, just <laughs> many ways to support. But the easiest way for free is to like, subscribe, and share. So please do that. And thank you, of course, to all the people who consistently listen. You guys are the greatest. With that being said, <laughs> I have a song suggestion. No. Good. I want to suggest We Must Praise by J. Moss. Mm -hmm. It's a great one. Because in that song, he's talking about a bunch of different things that if he was this, he would do this. If he was that, he Mm -hmm. would, this is how he would praise. Mm -hmm. And it like, for me, it emphasizes like how in the church. Yeah. We have different roles for Absolutely. different gifts, and like mm. we need each of those individuals to do their part, so that we can all come together and praise God as a as a unit. No matter what your role is, you know it's important. Amen. Mm, so we must praise J Moss. Love that song. Song suggestion. <coughs> what? No matter who. What we are, we must praise the Lord. Oh, my oh. soul. Mash up. That's crazy. <laughs> um, my song suggestion is um, Build Your Church mm. um, Good one. by Elevation and Maverick because it talks about just the power of the church and how the gates of hell won't prevail against, which is scriptural. And that the church is important. And that's why I just really love the song. Mine? You guys have song suggestions? Jesus the Healer by Circuit Riders featuring Alyssa Smith. Love her. Um, that's a great song about Jesus the Healer. Mm. Um, mm. Kind of goes with my personal application. Yeah. Uh, let him heal you. So listen to that song. Gabby? Yeah, I got I got nothing. So uh, That's okay. All right, everybody. Well, this has been The Mutual Friend. I'm Gabe. And I'm Gabe. I'm Gabe. And I'm Gabe. Peace. 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 Stop recording.